Mugs, postcards, fridge magnets, lumps of rock. Today in Culture Shop, we're looking at souvenirs. Why do visitors want a little piece of museum experience to take home? And how can you and your shop make sure they do? From guidebooks to pencils, from Archbishop teddy bears to cartoon sculptures. We'll look at some of the novel ways heritage attractions have made bespoke so much more than a logo on a bookmark. It's Culture Shop. A best-selling product is the, uh, the Bishop Duck. We sell about a thousand a year. Um, love it or hate it, you can't ignore it. Um, one of the favourite products is the Archbishop Bear. So here's an Archbishop Bear. Uh, he is made locally in Folkestone by Jane, who also makes clerical vestments and altar frontals. So these are offcuts from those, they're bits that are left over. Uh, and he's wearing a Canterbury cross around his neck. Uh, he was on the front cover of the Daily Telegraph Christmas Eve 1999, uh, at the turn of the millennium. Uh, and he's 75 pounds. So they're, they're very much a collector's item. They're 70 pounds a time, they're not uh, a pickup. If you want another teddy bear, that one is a pickup purchase. And if you want a duck uh, bishop, we've got that as well. And he's £5.99. So we're catering to a lot of different tastes. But I think the Archbishop bear is, is uh, my legacy. What is bespoke product? Bespoke product is product which is created exclusively for you, for your museum, using some of the designs from your collection or using designs um, created by a third party, illustrator, artist, whatever, but they're done specially for you. Or it may also be um, product to which you've bought a license from an artist or from an artist's estate to create the product for. So it's something which is exclusive to you and not generally available on the high street. We have so many sites in the UK. Each one has a unique story to tell. And the visitor generally wants to go to that site and buy a memento of that site, telling something, a reminder of what they've seen. Um, be it a cathedral or a museum or a, a, a castle, every single site has a different unique story to tell and I think that is what is vital to remember. That castle, a photograph of it, is what they would like to take away with them and I think that's why it's, it's important. People like to have that, be it a fridge magnet with a, 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 a name of a castle or a, a stately home that they've visited. They like to stick that on their fridge. I've been there. So key part of developing your merchandise, uh, your bespoke uh, product range is who's going to buy it, who's that bespoke range targeted at. Secondly, it's about the image on it and do, I guess I'd really um, avoid what I call plonk and place. It's just from a design point of view, not great. Well, we believe that when people come to the Wilson and to the shop, they're looking to buy souvenirs of their experience or um, gifts, either self-gift or a gift for somebody else. So we try to have um, pieces that relate to our collections and uh, relate to our temporary exhibitions. Um, we know that families come in, so we do have pocket money souvenirs for children, ranging up to more expensive gifts for um, children as well. Um, books are a core area, and we know that stationery sells very well. So we, we do have a, quite a broad range of pieces within the shop. Bespoke items are great because they're something which people carry around with them long after they've been to see or they give to their friends and family. For me, when I know that when I go into a museum shop and I'll always buy a postcard of the building, I'll always, if I go to the National Trust, I come away with about five pounds worth of postcards because I like to take home memories, like I was saying before, of the rooms I've seen and the gardens I've seen and, or an object that I've seen. So uh, Bespoke is a great way of endorsing uh, your museum and just kind of showing people a little bit about what the collection's all about and in a subliminal way getting product out into people's homes or into their environments which has got the name of the museum as perhaps as a backstamp on the base of a mug. Tote bags because we view those not only as a profit making exercise but also as a marketing and brand exercise so we've actually cut our margin on tote bags so that we can sell more because we want more people walking around in the streets actively marketing the Jeffrey on our behalf.
So it's a good way of people just almost becoming, you become a sort of subliminal part of their lifestyle, I guess. You kind of immerse yourself into their environment too through the product ranges which you're producing. Yes, well, I think rather than improving the visitor perception, I think it was actually that we were very slow to respond to visitor demands. What they weren't listening to is that people wanted to buy products that said they were from the Jeffrey. If someone's in our shop, they would rather buy something and know that the museum is going to benefit from their purchase than to go and buy a product from someone else. Or to, we find that with book sales actually as well, is that it might be more expensive to buy a book from a bookshop, but people would rather spend more knowing that their money, money is going to a good cause than to go home and buy it online for, for less money. We have actually done a lot of work with, with the messaging of that in the shop as well and saying that every purchase you make in the shop does support the activities of the Jeffrey, and I think people really do engage with that and they not just want, they don't only want to support you with their money, but they're actually quite happy to go out and champion you and they want to take something away with the Jeffrey name on it and share that with other people. Your customers will lead you. They, they will be the ones that will say, have you got products? Your, your staff in the shop will no doubt be constantly being asked, have you got a, a postcard with that image of it? Have you got a notebook with that image on it? That's what's important to remember. Be very led by your customers. Our little Egyptian hippo is probably the most popular work um, in the collection. It's the object everybody wants to take home with them. So we could work with a local ceramicist to create a range of hippos for us um, to... And of course everyone is unique. Every batch is a slightly different glaze, a slightly different colour depending on the firing. And we do a whole range from the newborns right up to the granddads. So we've got a range of five sizes and uh, a really good seller, particularly at Christmas. Everybody wants a hippo, so they can't have the real one. They take home one of these. And the price range you saw? Uh, well, we've got the price range here from £10 for a newborn up to uh, 55 for a granddad. <laughs> this is uh, one of our best-selling products, the stone carving kit. Um, it retails at £35, um, it's very popular as a gift for people, it's quite a considered purchase but I think because there's not many objects like that out and about that I think people really think that they're buying something unique, which they are. Um, we also run stone carving workshops at the gallery so it's a perfect tie-in for delegates on that course. So you get a piece of Cotswold limestone alongside some different um, tools, all in a printed bag and an instruction leaflet. Um, coming to the gallery and seeing Hepworth sculptures, it does inspire people to do their own sculptures. And I think this is a perfect introductory kit uh, to making that step. So our bespoke product is quite a new uh, a new bit of territory for the Jeffrey. It's something that's only started since I've been here. They historically only had a, a guidebook, two guidebooks actually, and uh, a mug that were Jeffrey branded. And the mug wasn't obviously Jeffrey made either. It was actually done by an artist for the Jeffrey. So we've now commissioned an illustration of the museum and have applied that to a lot of products. And we've used some of the archive images that belong to the museum's collections on some product. But at the moment, percentage-wise, it's very small. It's very much in its early stages of development and it's in the, the trial period still. Probably accounts for maybe 3% of our overall product lines are Jeffrey branded. But already we've gone from four greetings cards, there's a trial run, we've doubled that already, we're about to double it again. Uh, because our feeling is why? Why would we stock other people's bought-in cards if we can stock Jeffrey cards, which our audience engage with more and obviously have a greater margin for us as well, so there's double benefits. So it's more about thinking what's right for the image that you're putting together. So you're thinking about this bespoke range, who's the target market that it's um, focused at? What are the sort of things that that market would want to buy? We've got Tony, Ben and Karl Marx around here. I mean, our posters and things, they, I like those because they're so different and so unique and anything with something from our collection on, which is bespoke, I really like and I'm all for them. I'm all for postcards and anything like that. So I'm really on board with that. But things with our logo on, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. So we keep it very limited. We've got our mugs, which sell really well, which have, there's always ideas worth fighting for and our logo on it. And then I keep it to 
pencils, rubbers, erasers, sweets, which do really well with our logo on it. I'm, I will always recommend having branded sweets in a shop because it's just such an easy sell. It's so easy to get, you know, greedy children to buy them. We're also selling, just this year, a little pencil with a stained glass border design on it. And that's whistling out. That's really, people love that. Uh, so we've got that one right. And that's a, um, it's less than a pound. I think it's a 99 pence product. Might be a pound because we're trying not to have all the, the penny change business uh, with, the, with the lower price merchandise. There's a big range. There's a big range. What's your favourite? Uh, I think my favourite is the Archbishop Bear. I think it was, it was, it was just something that was so right, so in your face, uh, great, you know. Who could not like it? Who could not want it? Uh, even if, to be honest, you can't afford it. If you can't afford that, we have another bear at 4 99 so don't worry. And does the Archbishop have one? Uh, Archbishop Carey had one, because it came out during his tenure. Uh, I, Archbishop Rowan had one in his house, I know, because I saw it. Um, I haven't been into Old Palace uh, since Justin Welby became Archbishop. Uh, he's certainly aware of it. Uh, whether he's got one, I'm not sure. Uh, if not, I'm sure somebody will rectify that shortly for him. Bespoke, if you can afford to do it, long term, I think is a great way to go. But if it doesn't work, there are other ways, um, if you can't make that investment in it, there are other ways to do it. So, for example, having swing tags on something saying specially chosen for sale at or specially chosen by the shop at whatever. So it's like giving an endorsement to a piece of merchandise. We created a, a lovely scarf with Fox and Shave featuring Giacometti's tree. Uh, first design was a, a detail, much more of an abstract, but the foundation would only sign it off if we did the complete image, which we did. And we just thought a lovely little kind of flash of green on the end. looks really lovely and beautiful thing to wear, actually. Each one comes with a tag uh, with a little bit about the, the work and the artist. Uh, and of course, the individual Sainsbury Centre tag, which makes it that really unique item. That's our, our USP, really, our unique selling point is from the Sainsbury Centre, a limited edition of 200 scarves. I want the spoke to be aesthetically pleasing. I want them to take away something, you know, them to be able to take away something that they've seen in the galleries that's made them stop and think, oh my goodness, look at that, whether it's a trade union poster, whether it's the first copy of the Labour Minutes, things like that, because that's what museums are about, it's those things that make you feel things, it's those things that you take away, it's not People's History Museum, that's not it, and I want them to take away that from the shop rather than just a logo. But to get your products, you need suppliers, right? So how do you find them? Where do you start looking? How do you know they're right for you? And what happens to get from idea to delivery? Join us next time when we will go shopping for suppliers. We'll get some great advice on everything from writing briefs, checking copyright, minimum orders, carriage and repeats. Plus, how to manage the costs and increase those all-important profit margins. That's all in the next edition of Culture Shop. See you then. Bye. -bye.